This is a sweet speech. Since ASAP Rocky was taken into custody in Sweden three weeks ago, there has been some development in the case, some facts have hit the surface, and there has been a debate on both sides of the Atlantic. What's going on with ASAP Rocky's case? That's what we will address in this video. Before we get started, I want to thank all of my financial supporters. This is my day job. Without you, this channel would not be possible. I also want to ask you to check out my website, swedespeaks.com, and to follow me on BitChute. There are links in the box below, and you know, better safe than sorry, so make sure to check that out. So, as I said, during the month of July, more facts in the Ace of Rocky case has hit the surface, and there has been a debate on both sides of the Atlantic. Let's have a look at the facts first. On July 25th, Daniel Sunason, prosecutor in the case, announced that ASAP Rocky will be charged and that he will be in custody until the trial. ASAP Rocky could face two years in Swedish prison. It has been reported that before the fight between ASAP Rocky's crew and the Afghan attacker started, the Afghans asked them for hush. ASAP Rocky and his crew then asked the Afghans to leave them alone. After that, the Afghans attacked ASAP Rocky's bodyguard. And even after that, ASAP Rocky tried to defuse the situation, but eventually it escalated into a street fight in Stockholm, Sweden. I described this in my video, ASAP Rocky harassed and detained, and I will add a link to it in the description below. After having been reported to the police, ASAP Rocky made a counter-report against the attacker, a man named Mustafa Jafari, supposedly 19 years old and an Afghan citizen. However, it was announced on July 22nd that the attacker will not face any charges. Isn't Sweden just wonderful? However, we now know some more details about the attacker, Mustafa Yafari. He is an Afghan citizen who moved to Iran when he was 6 years old with his family. He came to Sweden as an unattended minor in 2015, a month before he turned 15 years old, supposedly. He said that there was a threat against him in Iran. However, Jafari is now on vacation in Iran. When Jafari came to Sweden, he said that he wanted to become a policeman and was registered at a senior high school in Tyresö, near Stockholm, during 2016. Jafari was sentenced twice. February 18th, 2016, sentenced for theft and shoplifting. May 9th, the same year, sentenced for physical abuse, which was confirmed by Svea Court of Appeal on July 5th, the same year. In 2017 and 2018, he was sentenced for pity narcotics crimes. The Swedish legal system called the narcotics crimes pity. The other attacker is named Davud Husseini. He is also an Afghan citizen and he has been sentenced in Sweden seven times. Now he lives on welfare. To this I would like to say that any sane country would have deported these guys for life when they committed their first crime in Sweden. But hey, it's Sweden. They just don't do it that way. I'm really sorry, but that's the way it is. I have seen that Tim Pool is telling people not to go to Sweden. He is right. Do not go to Sweden. So what have the debate looked like? US President Donald Trump called up Stefan Löfven, Prime Minister of Sweden, and tweeted on July 20th that he, quote, just had a good call with Swedish Prime Minister Stefan Löfven who assured me that American citizen ASAP Rocky will be treated fairly. Likewise, I assured him that ASAP was not a flight risk and offered to personally vouch for his bail or an alternative, unquote, and added in a comment to his own tweet, quote, our team teams will be talking further and we agreed to speak again in the next 48 hours, unquote. Sweden does not have a bail system, but as Trump said, or an alternative. ASAP Rocky's mom was interviewed by TMZ, saying that Sweden is out to get her son. Listen to this. You think Sweden has a vendetta against rappers or successful black men or black men in general? Or what, what do you think the, is going on here? I don't want to call the race call, mm -hmm. okay? But that's what it's looking like, mm -hmm. you know? So... If they walk like a duck and they quack like a duck, then it's a duck. And you know what? I'm not going to say that she's right, but I will not say that she's wrong either. 
Obviously, the Swedish legal system protects the Afghans over these black Americans, and officially, Swedes like to think of themselves as not being racist at all. However, virtue signaling Swedes in favor of Sweden's open border policies usually do not live in the same neighborhoods as the migrants, or even Swedish born children of non European migrants. Tim Poole says that Sweden is extremely racist, even towards white immigrants, as some white Americans living in Sweden had told him. I see no reason to question that statement. As you may know, I am half Finnish, and if I would get a dollar for every time in my childhood and youth that I heard racist or borderline racist comments about Finns, I would be a wealthy man. So Trump has tried to help ASAP Rocky. Recently, Kamala Harris, one of the Democrats who want to become the Democratic presidential candidate, was asked about ASAP Rocky and what she would do. Listen to this. I'm going to ask you another uh, legal issue. As president, how would you handle the ASAP Rocky case in Sweden? How will you use, use your power to make sure misuse of power doesn't happen in cases like this? and that this case would stay in the State Department and not go to the White House? Listen, I am a, I, there is no question that this White House has been, has been playing politics with, um, with, his, his, <laughs> with his role of leadership, and it has to end. We have got to take this case on against Donald Trump and expose it for what it is. So you're saying this is another piece on the rap sheet of Donald Trump, this misuse of power in the ASAP Rocky case? Yes. Okay. All right. Say it loud. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted the folks to hear. So not much help from President Harris if this would happen under her watch. Americans need to remember this. Due to all this, the Swedish ambassador to Washington, D.C., Karin Olofsdotter had her vacation interrupted. She had to go back to work in July. Vacation in July is almost sacred in Sweden. Anyway, she tweeted on July 26th that, quote, Prime Minister Stefan Löfven have explained and emphasized the complete independence of the Swedish judicial system, prosecutors and courts. In Sweden, everyone is equal before the law. The government is not allowed and will not attempt to influence legal proceedings." Unquote. Karin Nolofstotter's tweet is full of lies. First of all, judges are appointed by the government in Sweden, according to the Swedish Instrument of Government, Chapter 11, Article 6, or as it says in the law, quote, regular judges are appointed by the government, unquote. Second of all, according to the Instrument of Government, Chapter 12, Article 9, the second half, and I quote, If there are special reasons, the government may decide that further measures to investigate or prosecute a criminal act shall not be taken, unquote. Also, the Swedish government pardoned 9,000 Afghan citizens from being deported from Sweden last year, so the government can do a lot if they want to. President Trump does not seem to be happy with the response from the Swedish Prime Minister, Stefan Löfven, and on July 26th, Trump tweeted, quote, Very disappointed in Prime Minister Stefan Löfven for being unable to act. Sweden has let our African American community down in the United States. I watched the tapes of ASAP Rocky, and he was being followed and harassed by troublemakers. Treat Americans fairly. Hashtag free Rocky, unquote. I have not seen any response from the Swedish Prime Minister, but a former Prime Minister of Sweden, pseudo-conservative Carl Bildt, responded on Twitter. Carl Bildt tweeted the following, quote, The rule of law applies to everyone equally and is, and is exercised by an independent judiciary. That's the way it is in the US and that's certainly the way it is in Sweden. Political interference in the process is distinctly off-limits. Clear? Unquote. Carl Bildt is a liar. The judiciary is not independent in Sweden. As I have already pointed out, judges are appointed by the government. And the members of the jury? They are appointed by political parties in Sweden. There is no jury of your peers in Sweden. Sweden is like a softer version of East Germany, although the corruption of the Swedish legal system started already in the 1930s, before there even was an East Germany. Maybe the East Germans got inspired by Sweden. Anyway, not everyone in Sweden agrees with Karin Olofsdotter and Carl Bildt. 
To me it seems like a lot of Swedes think that the attackers got what they had coming. That they deserved it. I am going to have to agree with that. Even in the legal community in Sweden, some people have spoken up. Leif G. W. Persson, one of the most well-known criminologists in Sweden, has called the detainment of ASAP Rocky unpleasant. He has said that the fact that the prosecutor called it severe physical abuse uh, is, to, is beyond reasonable fantasies. The Swedish lawyer Mats Berg has also written that, quote, the detainments of Aesop Rocky and Julian Assange opens the window to Sweden's inability to see nuances and apply proportionality in the use of authority against individuals. Sadly, it is not until these internationally noted cases are highlighted that the citizens also are given the opportunity to discuss the issue in its right light, through different media. ASAP Rocky forces the legal system to scrutinize itself, but ASAP Rocky should not be in custody. This will guaranteed be continued." Unquote. So what can I say? I have to agree with Leif G. W. Passion and Mats Berg, but there is one more thing that I want to address. Some people in Sweden have complained about American interference in this case. Okay then, what happens when Swedish citizens run into problems with the American legal system. The Swedish citizen Mehdi Ghazali was captured in Pakistan by the US and put at Guantanamo Bay. He was held there from 2002 until 2004. Göran Persson, who was Prime Minister of Sweden then, personally pleaded his case to George W. Bush, who was President of the United States at the time. And in 2004, Mehdi Ghazali was released and could return to Sweden. It should be mentioned that, according to Wikipedia, and I quote, A man bearing the Salis passport was one of 12 foreigners Pakistani security officials reported, reported were captured trying to cross into Afghanistan on the 28th of August 2009. According to the Associated Press, Ghazali was reportedly part of a group of 156 suspected Al-Qaeda fighters caught while fleeing Afghanistan's Tora Bora mountains. Ghazali denied any links to Al-Qaeda." Another Swedish citizen in trouble with the US law was Annika Östberg. She is pre presented on Wikipedia the following way. Quote, Annika Maria Östberg DC is a Swedish citizen formerly incarcerated in California for an undetermined period, 25 years to life sentence. She was convicted of first degree murder of a restaurant owner and a police officer in 1981. In April 2009, after 27 years in a California prison, Östberg was handed over to Swedish authorities and transferred to Sweden and incarcerated in the Hinseberg women's prison north of Örebro. She was later fully released." Unquote. In Sweden, all the mainstream media were on her side, thinking of her as a victim of the US legal system. I remember this clearly from my youth. The fact that she was in on the murders with her boyfriend who, by the way, hanged himself in custody, was not spoken of in Sweden. Well, there was some criticism. Let me quote again from Wikipedia. There has been criticism against the Swedish media, also in Sweden, who has decided to protect a Swedish woman who has got a harsh treatment by foreign authorities. The criticism says that the media has avoided to describe what she did during the events. Swedish media could not avoid writing in a way giving readers in Sweden. The well-known police academy professor Leif G. W. Passion said, She is a very heavy criminal. Media has touched that very gently. I assume that is because they want her to be released. Then it is hard to do a correct description of the case." Unquote. And as I said, Annika Öspe was transferred to Sweden in 2009. In 2011, she was released from prison in Sweden. How did she get transferred to Sweden? Sweden's Prime Minister, pseudo-conservative Fredrik Reinfeldt, pleaded her case to then-Governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So Swedes, don't give me all that talk about Americans not interfering in the ASAP Rocky case. And by the way, Annika Ösberg was guilty, and Mehdi Ghazali is at least an Islamist, probably guilty too. So what else is there to say about this? Don't go to Sweden. I mean it. Do not go to Sweden. And free ASAP Rocky. And that's what I have to say about this. So what do you think? Comment below. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate any donations. Even a dollar makes a difference. 
if everyone who watched this channel gave one dollar it would transform this channel just take a look at the links below but if you really can't financially support this channel I would be very grateful if you would share a link to one of your favorite videos from this channel on your social media because ad revenue also helps and it also helps against YouTube's de-ranking of channels also make sure to like subscribe and hit the notification bell most importantly please pray for this channel and check out my live stream on Saturday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 11.30 p.m. Central European Time. Until next time, have a nice day, thank you for watching and God bless.